Hello everybody, I'm in Moss Central, and as you've seen by the title, Welcome Back to the Island, we're back in Great Colquart. It has been a very, very long time. However, thanks to Games UK passing me his copy of the Great Colquart map, the map that I used to have, um, as you will remember from last year's videos, I now have it back, and we are now having another run on it. So in this video, we are going to be taking another look at the C400R open top variant made for special, especially made for West Country 3. We're driving this time in the DIWA um, variant of the vehicle. We usually drive the Eco Life. So we're going to see the difference in sounds and drive quality, hopefully, while taking um, a run on it um, on the island circular. So as you can see by the side, it replicates city sightseeing York. We'll discuss more about this um, as we drive, but credits to Danny Deering for this absolutely super repaint that you can download from the Fellows Film forums that I will again link in the description below. So get the vehicle set up now. There we go. So just a pre-warning that there may be sections of this map where the textures haven't worked fully. The reason for that is due to the age of it. It's been quite difficult to sometimes get the textures working here and there. So apologies if that is the case. That's the main primary reason why there hasn't been a video of this as of yet. As this isn't the same copy as you can see where the passengers are walking. This isn't the same copy as the, um, of the map that I previously had. So we have a little look on the front as well. We are not operating the E1 today, we are operating the Great Coquart Island Tour. So we're sort of pretending that Transit have loaned this vehicle. They used to have sort of city sightseeing in Oban, all of those places, sort of in Scotland. So we're doing one of those sort of city sightseeing tours as such. Because I thought this is the best way to welcome the map back into our lives. So for those of you wondering what this map is, who have maybe not been around the channel for that long, oh, and you'd be like, oh, sorry, sorry, just to have a Stop having a go at me, I'm sorry, okay, I'm sorry. I'm glad there's only one person sat in the open air bit as well. But Grey Coquart was a map made in right path variants of variation many, many years ago. I think we're going on about six or seven years ago this was made and it spent a lot of time on the old Osiek forums before being converted to left path it was taken down and then converted to left path by the now departed Lowland 21 um, studios and was up for a bit until the Osiek forums sadly went down and has since been a difficult map to get hold of I understand there'll be a few of you watching this video going oh where can I find the map where can I find it now, that is always an interesting subject when it comes to this map. For those of you who have been a while, you will understand this as well. Where I would love to release it to you all. I would love for the opportunity for you all to try this and enjoy this map as well. However, unfortunately, due to the sort of legality standing on it, I will have to sort of seek the permission. And I probably will be speaking to some of the people in the UK development team um, to see how that would work. But I have to seek the permission before I release it publicly, as I don't want to get into any bother for um, doing so. So this is the bus depot, that as you will notice there was an 0405 there, painted in a livery from Australia, and that's because when you download Manly, it converts all your static 0405s to um, city bus livery. So I think the last time we drove this was in the Volvo Beaten B Renown that we are going to be driving at some point um, in a future video. So do look out for that very soon. I am just currently trying to find the map that I haven't driven it on yet. Because I've driven it on a fair few maps already. So the vehicle that we are driving today specifically is S400 YRK. That's a private registered vehicle but um, is fleet numbered 4004 within the York fleet. 
The vehicle is ex London as you would expect and was converted to open top use I believe by Ensign Bus. I believe they converted it because they're doing a few conversions at the moment for First Eastern Counties on their um, 323 53 Reg B70 Gemini's. So this is one of a number of E400s that now operates the city sightseeing in York, a route that has seen a turbulent recent history. Oh come on game, I don't know why you're lagging. Not lag on me, I'm running it on a much better PC than last time. But it has had a turbulent history. Starting off sort of in the recent history with the old, I want to say Leyland Olympians. I think they were Leyland Olympians. I know they had Leyland's um, originally. I'm unsure if they, I believe they were, they were Leyland's, were the e regs that they used. Either Leyland's or very, very early Volvo's. But they used them, the e regs from Lovian. And they were used sort of a few, uh, had green seats for them, had the original Lovian maquette. And they were used on the city sightseeing and come DDA regulations in 2016. Um, 20, yeah, was, yeah, it was 2016 was last year for them because I remember going down there and going on them because they lasted up to the first quarter of 2017 as well. They were slowly replaced by some more Exlovian vehicles, the Dennis Tridents, that they started to convert to electric. So they were the world's first electric open top sightseeing buses, double deckers that were converted from full diesel to electric by Magtech. Unfortunately, um, sort of slowly into the launch of these, one of them set a light partially, had a partial engine fire that was then followed by one a few months later that fully burnt down. So unfortunately, due to sort of this and it being quite a, a controversial um, incident, they decided to withdraw or mass withdraw the Dennis Trident presidents and replace them with these vehicles. So I believe I've seen these. I don't think I've actually got any photographs of them. I don't think I do actually. So I need to take a trip over to York next month, I think. Hey, there's the massive sheep. This is what I love about Great Cold War is it's a very, very different vibe to any other map that exists. Yes, it's an old map now, yes it's not the most modern as you can see the road quality isn't as good as other maps I'm driving, I've really driven into the curb there, oh dear. However it is still a very very nice map to drive, it's still got unique attributes, a giant sheep, uh, <laughs> and the idea that you're driving around on an island, especially these island explorers where you do sort of full loop circuits are very very nice to drive on. I did want to drive this, the reason we're on this is I wanted to drive the city sightseeing York repaint and I was like what map could we drive it on as we've sort of, we've driven most of the other stuff quite a lot recently and I thought well we need something a bit different, we need a little bit of variety because I've got some other videos planned this week so there's certain maps I, I couldn't drive on um, in this video otherwise I'd be repeating myself later this week for some unique videos um, that I've got planned. So I was very much sort of stuck on what to do, thus why we're on this map. But I'm certainly not complaining about it, it is a very, very nice map to drive. So something I will do this week is I will have a little chat with some other people in the Omsi world and see the legalities of releasing this map for um, some of you to download. Obviously some minor, minor changes and things would probably need to be made, um, i.e. on the bus stop cube front and creating a very basic AI list um, that can sort of be accessed and utilised by everyone. Because when it comes to a map like this I wouldn't be wanting to transform the entire thing, it's more of just, it, it isn't released at the moment so let's get it out there sort of thing. So speaking of city sightseeing, what city sightseeing routes have you been on? Let me know in the um, comments below, as I'd be quite interested to see what sort of city sightseeing routes you've been on, what vehicle did you have on it? Because they do run all around the world at this point. The concept of city sightseeing was started up by Ensign Bus in the 80s, um, late 70s and early 80s, 
and, sent, and they since sold off the business, I believe, in the early 2000s. So it's quite interesting that obviously it started in the UK, but it is now a very much a worldwide operation. I know in the UK, I've sampled the York one, as I mentioned previously, um, when they had the old Olympians on it, the E-Regis. I've also sampled the one in Cardiff using the unique, I believe, Neoplan engine vehicles that City Sight seems sort of, um, like, notoriously bought um, as a unique type of bus. Somebody will be able to tell, um, it's some of Vision, isn't it, what they call them, Sun Vision or something, um, where they were basically built as open top, new as open top vehicles. So there was them have been on that one. I'm trying to think, I don't think I've been on any others. I think in the UK that is. Now going across overseas and going over to Mallorca, and I have been on the city sightseeing in Palma. That's quite an interesting one. Because obviously when you go sort of overseas, you go abroad and you travel on let's say local bus services or you travel on your city sightseeing, something that you can sort of relate to in the UK you do notice a big, big contrast in how it's sort of presented over there. Now, the city sightseeing one was quite interesting as they used B90Ls, and they were B90Ls and you was open top, but they were not on the bodywork you would ever have seen before. I can't remember the name of the bodywork, I do apologise for that, but it was some European built bodywork, but on a Volvo B90L chassis. It was very similar to the Olympus in the idea that there's not that much soundproofing compared to the actual Gemini bodywork where there does seem to be a fair bit of soundproofing. Oh, that sounded nice. Where there is sort of soundproofing on the Gemini bodywork, the Olympus doesn't have as much soundproofing, thus why it's always louder, and the bodywork that these B9s in Mallorca have was very similar. So they had them, and they had quite an interesting route going to Castle, and um, that involved a very, very um, steep hill and a very fast road that provided um, quite a bit of entertainment um, for the B90L. As well as them, because of how big the city sightseeing route is over there, i.e. it's every 10 minutes, I believe. It's like pretty much standard bus service over there every 10 minutes. They also had a number of the ones that I mentioned earlier, sort of in Cardiff, um, where they have that unique bodywork, new city sightseeing format. Let's speed up a little bit. They had a number of them with Neoplan chassis. And oh my goodness me, they were absolute monsters. <laughs> really, really weird. As you can tell, they were quite old now because that they were new, so that bodywork was new going on 2002, 2003, I believe. So they are pretty old, and you can tell, but it was quite beasty. I don't think in total that I hadn't been on a Neoplan bus. I've been on many Neoplan coaches. I've driven many in the game as well, but I haven't been on a Neoplan bus. That was quite a surreal experience. You see, all those people complained of a slight acceleration issue when we left um, Airport Pier. And now I've just got to... I say that. No, I say that. <laughs> I say that. No, they're all ready to complain. That is something else um, if I do end up uploading this um, for you guys to play. If you are interested in that, do let me know in the comments below as well. Um, if that is something that interests you. But something else I'd be looking into doing is changing the sound pack. So yeah, I apologise that the textures aren't the best on this. Um, it's because I've had to sort of change the textures slightly to get them to actually work and then they just seem to have just had a little bit of a kaput moment. So apologies for that, but they're not, they're not as bad as I thought they were going to be, if I'm honest. They really aren't. I seem to have edited them okay. Okay-ish, should I say. So driving this map always reminds me of the Isle of Arran. It always does give off that vibe. Obviously the Scottish Isles, there's many different islands. Stagecoach operate on quite a lot of them. And then other operators like West Coast Motors, they operate on a few as well. And then there's a few sort of, this is more based off, I believe it's actually Coldquart, Coldquart um, I believe. 
it's called Quarter Something Else, where there is actually an island with the 320, the 319, and it is very much based off the island where um, I think it's actually Merport Coaches operate on it. And it's very much based on that. So the bit of the route that we're driving now from here that is called Quartz Slip up to Merport Pier, I believe, um, is the bit that's based off the real life 320 service that the two companies, one with red and blue buses and one with blue and um, white buses. Oh no, no, red and white, blue and white, there we go. Buses used to operate on. So I know that that has since changed. One of the companies has gone under. I believe the blue and white one went under and sold to the red and white. Although it could be the other way around, I must emphasise. But that's changed. However, this route does very much, or this map does remind you, especially the 319 of the Isle of Arran. As a number of years ago, and prior to the PS tax being withdrawn, I did a lot of research into the Isle of Arran, um, Blackwater, Fus Blackwater Foot Bus Station, and the, the sort of outstraining services. They operate the 321222324, I believe. And I did a lot of research on the island and how it operated, the buses used, the routes. And it's quite a unique case study, as something that's very interesting about it is this idea that obviously like many areas in the Scottish Isles they used to use beaten MPS types and then it used to have 709Ds as well and they were replaced um, it's the only, only place in sort of the stagecoach operation where they've been replaced by um, these but they were replaced by street lights and wheeled f wheel forward street lights as well so wheel forward street lights replace the 709Ds yes they have a few of them in Wales but the unique factor was the smallest um, sort of wheel behind street lights, standard street lights, that replaced the PS type. So it was quite an interesting choice. It was partly funded by the local parish councils and sort of stagecoach, and it is the only operation in this in stagecoach that uses street lights. And I understand there'll be a few of you watching and going, Central, you film street lights with stagecoach. Now the thing is with the street lights that I've been on. Those streetlights are HEVs. So those streetlights are longer, are the Streetlight Max 11.5 meter HEVs. So they aren't the same as the streetlights that operate in the Isle of Arran, that I believe are short, I believe they're something like 10.8 meter. Don't know why the shadow went up then, let's just ignore that. But I believe they're the 10.8 meters and they are standard diesel streetlights. So they are very much unique. They also wear a unique livery over there as well. So it's the only place within Stagecoach Scotland and Stagecoach UK that saw an entire fleet replaced by streetlights. Because obviously wherever Stagecoach have similar types, i.e. the wheel forwards in Wales, there's only a small number of them. And in Stagecoach Yorkshire, the HEVs, there's a small number of them alongside the other vehicles. But on the Isle of Arran, they were primarily just fully replaced, fully wiped out the rest of the fleet by streetlights and right bus, right bus products. So I do understand they have, may have the odd coach or two left on the island now, but I know that when the initial replacement took place, that was what they did that made it quite an oddity. And it's also quite sad to be fair seeing B10 MPS types um, replaced by streetlights that was quite a quite a sad one to be fair. As I know beat and BLEs being replaced by them was bad enough, but PS types as well was was pretty pretty shocking. So speaking of PS types in the fleet um, at Stagecoach, I remember going to the PS type farewell in Manchester when they used their last two examples, 20782 and 207. Yeah, was it 207? I believe I stopped here as well, don't so I will pull up so you have the opportunity to jump off. Okay, you don't want to jump off. I'm sure there's a bus stop there. I remember stopping it in the last time. No, if you don't want to jump off, you don't have to. You're all welcome to stay on. But I believe it was 20782 and 20783 that have been kept on at um, Manchester for use on the college contracts. And they withdrew them, obviously, the last week or two before DDA came in for single-deckers on the 1st of January 2016 and 
they ran sort of dupes alongside a few other examples that were sort of like the last in the other fleets elsewhere in Stagecoach and they ran alongside them on dupes on the 192 and I remember the day was that overwhelmed that the buses pretty much ran full for the entire day. So it was it was a good run with that. They used the new Hazel Grove Park and Ride site as well to park the um, beaten M's in. It was pretty cool. So just to think now, sort of five, five, six years on, or five and a half years on now, um, from that, from sort of the farewell of the PS times, what does Stagecoach Manchester have now? Sort of in comparison, the fleet has, has changed quite a lot, um, safe to say. I mean, they did have the, they had the return of the LX 400s um, last year that was very, very interesting. Um, so I saw a number of them return um, as they did something about free travel for under 19s, something like that. And that did see the return of the ALX 400 for a short time. I, I believe most of them are now gone. We are going to ignore the fact that the ground is currently a very, very similar um, texture match to the sky. We are just going to ignore that, despite the fact I zoomed right into it. So know that they've got their new BYD electric E400 um, MMCs. Or E400 cities, technically. I do actually need to have a ride on them at some point. No, when they entered service, I did look and think they were quite interesting. So expect expect a video on them very soon. Um, I do have a lot. I didn't realise that bus stop there blended in quite well. Oh, don't mount the curb. That's not good. Let's just pull it on in. Oh, no, oh, okay. It does look very nice as it's open top. As I say, it's free to download. So I would make most of that. The standard C400R regional is a free to download vehicle too. So unlike the Adam London one, the dual door one that you do have to pay for, the front door regional variant is a free to download bus. And this variation does come with West Country free. There is another map I highly recommend. I need to check. Yeah, I thought we did. I just needed to check because I couldn't remember if we go straight forwards and then left. Everybody's off, let's give it a bit of beans while we get to it. The, the thing is, is that if you, you're looking, oh gosh, Central, you know, they've run someone down. The problem with that junction is, is you have to drive through them again. Another thing on the list that would probably need to be sorted before this is re-released in any shape or form is that junction is a killer because what happens is, is every single time you go across it, every single time you drive across it, you always have to dodge someone because they don't stop. They, you've got to give way to the pedestrians, but because of how they were set up on this on this game it basically means that there's loads of them <laughs> so that's your problem you constantly sat there for about five or six minutes so now we've got to do the thing that people always do on this map oh 
There we go. Let's do that. Well, like everybody else does it, and I don't do it enough, to be fair. We'll drive it to the very, very end of the pier. I probably shouldn't have reversed it in, to be fair. I feel like... I feel like no one in their right mind would do that. So there we go. So that's it. That is our return. Our first video in the return to Great Colquart. And certainly not our last. So I do hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, do click the like button. So I know to record more on the map. And so that more people can find it and enjoy the video like you have. And if you are new to the channel, hello and welcome. Do consider subscribing for more content like this. Both on the virtual OMSI 2 and other transport simulator worlds. As well as the real life bus industry. Again, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Um, I will link all of the repaint and the bus and everything in the description below. So yes, thanks for watching. And I will see you all in the next video, mate. Goodbye for now. Bye.